Good morning, everybody. So welcome back to another live stream from Mission Resolve Foundation. We have some incredible teachers and educators and scientists and explorers today. And really, probably the most exciting thing that's going to happen is we're going to have some insanely cool kids who are youth ambassadors, really passionate about the oceans and conservation. And today's topic is going to be about marine plastic. And we have someone very special who's really pioneering this who just pulled 103 tons of marine plastic out of the oceans. So let's start by introducing some really special folks here from Broward County and our school systems that are part of this Mission Possible project we've been working on for a long time. And based on what's going on with schools, Charlene is joining us. Charlene, who runs uh, the virtual summer camp, Charlene Ambrose. Hi, Charlene. How are you today? Hi. Thank you for having us. And we understand you have some incredible students that are going to join us and ask some amazing questions of some very special scientists and a, a marine plastic pioneer, right? Yes, we have about 30 kids active live right now. They are excited to be a part of this field trip, this virtual online trip. And they want to learn all everything that they can about marine plastics and what Mary's doing. So we are here and ready for this exciting trip today. Incredible. And I know you have one of our favorite teachers with you too, Katie O'Fallon, right? And we're, we're live. This You're actually at the school at New River Middle School, one of these, these amazing rock star schools. The Guy Harvey logo and all of that. Hi, Katie. How are you That's today? Right. Hi, yeah. guys. So, Katie, you know what a huge fan we are, like everybody, of all the great work you do. And today, today we're thrilled to have Artie Odzer from NBC6, who is in the background there, who's going to actually do a feature special on the great work you are doing at the school, as always. So tell us a little bit about the kids and who's going to be part of the program today. What ages and grades and what does this constitute in the new normal? So um, I'm going to let Charlene tell you a little bit about the kids who are on right now, and then I'll chime in with our program for Mission Possible. So Miss Ambrose, what's going on at New River right now? Okay, so we are a part of the 21st Century Community Learning Centers program through the state of Florida. And that provides before and after school and summer programming for our students. So this summer, we actually have an online virtual program, thank you to COVID-19. So we wanted to make sure that we could still provide engaging and interactive activities for our students. So being a part of the Marine Science Magnet in Broward County, it would absolutely be amazing if we can do marine science activities, even though it's virtual. So with um, Mission Resolve, we are able to connect and do those types of things, such as this field trip that we're going on today. So the students are between sixth and eighth grade, um, mixed, diverse, boys, girls. It's just a variety of kids. Some of the kids are in our Marine Science Magnet program and some are not. So it's really open to anyone. Uh, we're just providing an engaging and enriching activity for students during the summer, all online. How cool, keeping them busy and actually bringing wonderful things from around the world into the classroom and into the homes, working with the kids. So one of the, the, the special folks we've got today is Mary Crowley, who's the founder of Ocean Voyages Institute. Mary is also the co-founder of Mission Resolve Foundation, and she just pulled a record 103 tons of marine plastic out of the ocean. Go, Mary. Good morning, Mary, from Hawaii at 3 in the morning. Thanks for getting up. To students. <laughs> Thank you. Great to be with you, and it sounds like a fabulous program. The ocean is so important to all of us, and the more you can teach everyone how we have to care for the ocean, because the ocean is our source of breath and our source of, of lots of good life for the planet. And so, Mary, we have to congratulate you because, first of all, as an amazing female role model for students, because a lot of this right now with great women like Sylvia Earle, who's a pioneer, and she's a dear friend of yours, it's so cool to have female role models like Katie and Charlene out there inspiring these young women, especially in, in their particular case, especially in Broward, we have this wonderful ethnic diversity. So females and minorities seeing all these great STEM jobs are out there for these kids with Katie's help and Charlene's to learn about that. Tell everybody about what you just did with this 103 tons, this record pull of plastic. Go Mary and Ocean Voyages. Tell everyone about that. Well, you know, as you just saw that slide, unfortunately, our ocean is full of what we call ghost nets, which is derelict fishing gear uh, that 
catches ocean life, sea turtles and um, dolphins and fish, and and it also goes against coral reefs and causes lots of destruction. So we have a wonderful sailing cargo ship that you can see here, which is great because they're able to sail most places and that's where being very environmental in terms of not using lots of fuel. And we have a whole system of using GPS satellite trackers that we give to vessels sailing through the area so that if they encounter uh, nets, they tag them and then we're able to go right out to this area and each tag is really like a beacon to an area that tends to have lots of debris in it. And so within a 12 to 14 mile radius, a big circle around the tag, we find lots of other nets. And we also find our garbage. We find lots of little plastic chairs and laundry detergent bottles. One of those, and, that's one of those beacons, right, Mary, that people can see? In the, yes, in the this, this is one of the beacons. They're about the size of a bowling ball or a soccer ball. And um, they have a tether and a carabiner, and they're attached to the net, as you see. And that helps once people are out there, actually citizen science or just helping ocean voyages, they place the beacon on a found uh, ghost net, and then your boat can actually go find it by the, the aid of the satellite to be able to find that particular beacon and then pull the plastic out onto the boat, right? That's how you're doing it? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so also one other person, and then we want to get to the fun part and let the students talk to you, Mary. One other person we just want to thank for getting uh, getting to join us today is Dr. Barry Rock. Barry was um, hand-chosen by uh, Vice President Gore and started the GLOBE program years ago. And Barry's program now has 135 countries with over 2 million kids involved. Barry, go Dr. Rock. How are you, sir, in New Hampshire today? I'm great, Pachi. It's uh, wonderful to be here. Uh, in addition to working with a lot of students, I'm a former NASA scientist uh, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, and I learned all about how to use satellites, uh, satellites that are 300, 500 miles up looking down on the Earth. And our hope is that uh, with the students' help, we'll be able to use satellite data to zoom in on the uh, GPS tracker area that Mary talked about. Um, Fantastic. Well, I, I know we've got some amazing students. Charlene and Katie, do you want to say hi and maybe introduce? We have a very special couple, our youth ambassadors today, that are dying to talk to Mary and Dr. Rock and ask some great questions. Yes. So um, we have some students from seventh and eighth grade for, from New River who are on, and they're going to ask you a couple questions about what you guys have been doing. Because one of the things that we want the students to do is part of our Mission Possible um, program it is marine plastics. And we want them to not only learn about what's being done to clean up the marine plastics, but also what they can do in their own community to help eliminate putting more plastics in so that hopefully as Mary does more and more her records will start getting lower because we'll be taking out less trash because we're putting less into it um, so that's our goal is for our students to become stewards for the marine environment that's part of our program at New River in the marine science program so uh, Miss Ambrose uh, do you want to um, see if uh, Dory is on or one of the kids yeah. that we can introduce sure. So um, Charlene, because I know that Ari wanted to just say hi quickly, and we want to do a big shout out to NBC for supporting the wonderful work you and Katie and Mindy are doing. Ari, do you want to come around to the camera and say hi to, I know you had a question for Mary. Or yeah, you want to ask her there? If it's possible to put Mary up full screen for a second, I'd just like to ask yeah. her one or two questions. There we go. And now, can you put our microphone up a little bit, just hold it like that, like yeah, not in the shot though. Mary, can you can you just tell us what you're hoping the kids get from an experience like this today? What what you're hoping they what the takeaway is for the kids? 
Well, absolutely. One thing about the marine plastics issue is it's one we're all part of the problem and thus we can all be part of the solution. Everybody that pays attention to cleaning up plastics from our environment where they don't belong, whether it's in a park or along a river or in a beach. And so everyone becomes an ocean hero by removing plastics from the environment and by making choices to stay away from throwaway plastics. You know, the it, plastics can be a wonderful material if they're for things like railroad ties or things that are used for long times, but plastic knives and forks and straws and plates and glasses just so quickly end up in our environment and end up killing birds and sea life. And so uh, really realizing that these are toxic substances and it is better to choose not to use them and to have alternatives for that and try to keep things out of our ocean and out of nature, period. Great. One other question. What time is it in Hawaii right now? <laughs> oh, it's five o'clock in the morning. So it's quite early. I was up late, and uh, uh, but it's a pleasure to be here because youth are so important. We have need a lot of help in getting our world in better shape. And uh, there's wonderful youth leaders I've met throughout the world that give great hope because they understand the importance of taking care of nature and having a good environment for all of us. Thank you so much. You guys can get on with your meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Ari. Go NBC. Much appreciated. So, Katie and Charlene, do you want to bring in, we've got some rock star students who want to ask Mary and Dr. Rock some questions. Go ahead, Charlene. Um, you want to introduction? Okay, let me, let me see if they're here. Okay, sorry. Um, are they in the room? Oh, there's yeah. Dory. Okay, Dory, you had a question? Uh, I wanted to know how many people, like, it took to get that much trash? Oh, that's a great question. And I don't actually know that I have the answer to that. But a large number of pieces is 103 tons of trash is, you know, plastic tends to be a fairly light material. And so, um, 103 tons is a lot of pieces. You know, you get a sense of the size of it. I don't know if we have any of the photos of the unloading of the ship, but um, it was unloaded very efficiently by Stephen Wilson. And, you know, it just, they kept lifting more and more out of the ocean so a huge amount and and a huge variety even though our concentration was mainly nets the nets roll over in the ocean and they catch other nets they catch sea life and kill it that's why they're called ghost nets because they keep fishing and they also um, uh, catch uh, all sorts of our pl consumer plastics that are out there floating. This, you can see the hold of the vessel as the crew puts things in kind of beauty white industrial bags. And so the hold of the vessel, you go up three layers of bags and then they put a layer of just open nets there so people can see what they look like as well. So a uh, huge number of pieces, 
clumped together uh, by the Nats and individual. Do you have Thank any you. other questions? Mary, um, I was going to follow up on Dory's question. Do um, this type of work. There you go. What did you say, Dory? I, I've, I've been doing work involving oceans and teaching people for the last 40 years, uh, but I've been doing this specific ocean plastic work for the last 11 years and getting more and more passionate about it because the more we go out there, the more we see how important it is that be active. I think something to really learn is sometimes people say things like, oh, the problem is too big. You know, the trash is too far away. But the fact is, there's solutions. Uh, going out and picking up this, this garbage from our ocean is not difficult. It, it is something that you know, it takes lots of manual labor. It's hard work uh, when it makes such a difference to the environment. People are very happy doing this work. It makes everybody feel good because they know they're doing something important for the ocean environment. And, you know, you, you just see uh, the joy on the crew's face because these are people that work on oceans, that some of them are from small island groups. There's five um, native guys from the Kiribati area. And so they live very close to the ocean growing up. And... They just say this is the best work they've ever done because it's, it's helping our, some of the crew say it's helping our mother ocean. And that is certainly true. Great answer. So, Corey, do you have another question for Mary or Dr. Rock? Um, one last question. How do we get more people to understand the severity of like the problem and make changes? That's a great question. You know, and many times in our, in the world, as we go around and work different places, we um, sometimes uh, young people learn about all this in schools and they go home and they educate their parents about it because a lot of people have no idea how long plastic lasts for and how it's made with lots of chemicals and and toxins and so you know when we come back from a trip like this uh we try to do lots of uh, you know press events because it's wonderful to get uh, shows on television and it's wonderful to have newspaper and magazine coverage. It's wonderful when people do lectures and film clips. It's all something about seeing plastic in nature, like the plastics in our ocean. Now, this is an interesting slide there as the crew came across a net that had, we can see two of them here, I think that had five dead tuna in it. And it shows how, you know, live things get caught and die in these nets. And so uh, by picking up nets, Nets, we're not only removing these toxins from the ocean, but we're keeping whales and dolphins and important ocean creatures alive. So, uh, you know, how people learn about it is a great question. And, 
you know, challenging because they learn from us spreading the word and showing people what it's like out there and showing how people can make a difference. And Dr. Rock probably can make some good comments because he single-handedly or with his team, I'm sure, but went out and, and made huge awareness through schools, through young people. Thank you, Mary. Um, Dory, uh, that's a great question. And I think the best answer is the one that Mary gave uh, by educating people. And what you and I and the other students are going to learn how to do is use satellites in orbit, eyes in the sky to map where the plastic is so that Mary knows exactly where to go to find it, pull it out of the ocean. So together we're gonna to be a wonderful team, uh, removing plastic, but also educating people about not putting more plastic in the ocean. Great. So, do you have more questions for Dr. Rock and Mary? Dory, you uh, had a comment? No, that's it. Dory, while we have Dory speaking to Dr. Rock and Mary, what is it like for you at home using the computer to learn and meet people like Mary and, and Dr. Rock personally? Um, I believe it's a great opportunity that I'm still able to do this, even from like at home. And so you're you're actually studying and working with uh, with uh, teacher Mrs. O'Fallon and and Charlene in the group right from home every day uh, with your friends at school and learning that way. Are, are you getting used to all of this being a new way to learn and meet people like Mary and Dr. Rock? Uh, yes. Um, and I think it helps me understand how to use the computer better as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Well, we're, we're so grateful that you took a minute to say hi to everybody. I know Charlene and, and uh, Kate, you have some wonderful other students. So, uh, Miss O'Fallon or uh, Charlene, do you want to chime in and introduce? We have some great other youth ambassadors that want to talk to Mary and Dr. Rock. Yes, we have um, Chanelle Leons, um, who is a um, Haitian Creole bilingual student that oh, also that has been at New River since she was in sixth grade and she's participated in our programming since sixth grade. She'll be an eighth grader this year and she has been actively participating in our online um, program this summer mm -hmm. since we've started. So, Chanelli, um, wave to everyone. Hi. Hi, Chanelli. And, and um, Chanelli, why don't you tell us about how you've enjoyed online programming and getting an opportunity to talk to people outside of Broward County and outside of Florida completely? I feel like it's safer eye to eye because of the pandemic. And not everybody has a chance to do this. And what are some of the things that you've learned um, so far about um, marine plastics, even though you're online and at home? I learned that if people don't do something quick, it could get worse. And what are you going to do at home to improve the situation? Use less plastic. Good. Great. Chanelli, can you do us a favor here? Because I know you're bilingual too, and we have some wonderful viewers. I've got all of my Haitian friends. Can you say hi to everybody out there in, in, uh, in Creole and say hello and just explain what's going on today so that they can understand? Good job. Can Tell them about your, just say in, um, in Creole about how you're doing online school and you're traveling the world online. Um, I feel online school, who connect to Bagayan. 
instead of body moves not feel here to new face Good job. Fantastic. Thank you. Do you, do you want to ask Mary and Dr. Rock some questions, Janelle? Yes. Um, one of my questions are, how many trips did you do? How many trips do we do? Um, we, we do uh, <clears throat> lots of small trips and some big trips that are we started in 2009 doing month-long expeditions out to the middle of the ocean and doing small cleanups and doing lots of scientific studies and we persisted doing that over quite a few years where we'd be doing um, one long trip and then a series of shorter trips from variety of locations. Our bigger cleanup started last year where we went out for 25 days. Um, and we brought in over 42 tons. Uh, this year we went out for 48 days, um, almost twice as long and um, brought in 103 tons. And the ship actually is tomorrow to go out and do another trip. This trip will be 30 days. So truthfully, we would like to do four ships operating um, um, probably two 45 day trips every year and we'd like to expand this because we're concentrating on this area in the Pacific between the Hawaiian Islands and um, California, the West Coast. Uh, however, this problem of our trash is in all the oceans. It's in the Atlantic Ocean um, and it's in the Indian Ocean and, you know, it's in the northern part of the oceans and the southern part of the oceans. And so that's why we really are learning the best ways. It was nice talking to the crew and the feeling that they learn from each trip they do how to do it better, how to get the nets up more quickly and how to uh, do a better job and, and Dr. Rock and I are working on some exciting ways to use satellites so we can be uh, looking down from space and seeing where the plastics are. So, Mary, Mary, with that slide that we're seeing, can you explain to everybody where this is in the world so they get an idea of where the focus of your work is in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Sure. Well, th this graphic is is showing the the currents, and actually, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is on both sides of the Hawaiian Islands. Both uh, they're above; it's above the Hawaiian Islands, and both to the uh, east and the west, and you. Know, in this area of the currents that are shown here in the graphic tends to accumulate the plastics. It typically takes some scientists figured out about seven years. If a piece of plastic gets in the gyre, it takes about seven years for it to go around the whole area. And um, sometimes during the winter storms, etc., plastics come out of this central region and they go particularly against coral reefs and onto islands. And so the, the issue is growing and that's where um, you learning about it in school and you telling other people because it's amazing how many people have no idea what's going on in our ocean and how it affects 
the ocean ecosystem. My friend Sylvia Earle that Patchy was mentioning always says two out of three breaths we take come from the ocean. And so if we harm our ocean ecosystem and it starts not functioning properly, we're using, we're, you know, really cutting into the quality of our own health and our own breath. So taking care of our ocean is taking care of ourselves and you sharing that message that so many people don't understand really is a big help and and also paying attention to your plastics which isn't easy we're surrounded in a society that so many things come packaged in plastics so many foods come in plastic so you know we're not saying we can all go and just suddenly be plastic free i know some people who have gone plastic free totally but it takes a lot of time and effort you know, what i tell everybody is if everybody makes small actions it adds up to quite big actions and that's what we need to do we have to start doing whatever we can whatever is possible for us and all together we really create big and important change yeah. well, these, are, these are great questions and i think charlene i think you have another great student that you wanted to also introduce right yes we have darlin hernandez and darlin i think is in seventh grade right Yes, Darlin is in seventh grade. I think Chanelli has to leave so that Darlin can enter. Yeah, great question, Chanelli. Thank you Thank for joining you. us. I think, uh, I think what Mary said is right because some of our students, they always feel like it's if it's so little what I do, but it makes a big impact. It's like every little bit makes a difference. And I, I think that's one of the messages that our students are trying their best to share with other students and their parents is their little bit and everyone doing a little bit is going to make a big impact um and we want our students to realize that just because they can't go out on a boat with you mary they can still see what you're doing and support it by doing what they can do in their backyard like you said picking up things when they're out and a walk in the park or in their neighborhood things that aren't supposed to be there. Like I told the kids this morning, I said, remember finding Nemo where everything, you know, all greens lead to the ocean. Well, all trash will eventually end up in the ocean some way, somehow, if we don't stop it from getting there. And so I, I'm glad that you mentioned that to them because every little bit does make a big difference. And one of our students in the that's watching um, had a question about the map that you showed and they said, how does the plastic go that far into the ocean without breaking apart? Can you talk to them a little bit about all the um, little microplastics maybe and nurdles and kind of how it breaks apart a little bit? Yes, well, you know, plastics come in all different forms and different chemicals are used with the plastics and some of the chemicals used harden the plastics. And so, uh, you know, there you can find charts that are interesting to look at that estimate the life of different plastics. And the life of many plastics can be 100 years, 200 years, even longer than that. And then you also hear about the whole issue of microplastics. And I was talking to um, some of the crew on the boat yesterday, and I was talking to them about how you find current lines in the ocean that can be filled with thousands, millions of jagged pieces of plastic about this size and it's obviously plastic that has been put through crushers and sometimes the crushers may be on a boat but many times the crushers are ashore 
And it, it's those plastics that have been crushed. It looks just like when one recycles computers and crushes them and then you have a waste stream coming from that. And it looks just like what you see in the ocean. And those crushed plastics are the ones that are most likely to break down and become microplastics. Um, or, you know, even some of our clothes, um, when we wash them, they break down and create microplastics because the harder plastics take a long time to break down. But once they've been crushed, their composition, um, you know, is changed and it's easier for them to then become the, the microplastics, which is a, a whole other challenge. But even the nets have pieces that flake off of the ropes, etc. So the microplastics are a real issue. However, we have so much in terms of solid plastics and nets can remove that directly improve the quality of the ocean and ocean life. It, we're concentrating on that. And we also have some people, including um, young people in different parts of the world that are working on ways to remove microplastics. So when we go out on these trips, we can experiment with different things that could help the ocean in different Murray, Murray, while you're on that, this picture was pretty graphic so that the students can understand a lot of the bycatch from these nets. Do you want to explain to everybody what they're looking at? Because that's a pretty graphic picture and what it, that story tells. Yes, yes, this picture is a heartbreaker. Um, you know, when the vessel brings these nets on board, as you see, they're pretty big and they, they then try to... Uh, uh, put them into, cut them into pieces so they can go in those big white bags. And inside a big net, they found a different colored net. And this net had this poor sea turtle skeleton inside it. And um, you could see the poor turtle got caught in this net and had no way out and then that net got caught in other nets and he was just destroyed by the nets. And this happens to so many creatures, uh, but finding his skeleton way inside this net was just another example of why it's so important for all of us to do whatever we can to keep it. So hard to out and clean them up from it. Yeah. And Mary, I know Ari had another question for you. Ari from NBC6. Thanks, Ari, again for covering this. Um, and Matt, can you go full frame on Mary so when she answers it, Ari has that? Yeah, Mary, just uh, we hooked up a speaker here so the audio is much better. And I just want to ask you the same question I asked you earlier. Um, can you just tell us what you hope the takeaway is from this experience for all of these kids? Thank you. I, I hope that everybody knows how important the ocean is to uh, our health and the health of the planet. Uh, two out of every three breaths we take come from the ocean. And the actions that each of us can take in our daily lives, I tell people, you know, we can't each devote ourselves to using all our time solving the world's problems. But if everybody does their part, does whatever they can do in picking up plastics from nature, protecting the birds, protecting things from flowing into the ocean, it makes a big difference. So education is key to people learning how plastics don't belong in nature. 
Um, we don't want to be eating plastics in our food. We don't want animals in nature and the ocean eating plastics. So everybody choosing to avoid throw away plastics to do cleanups in their own neighborhoods. You can all be helping Ocean Voyages Institute while we clean the oceans. You can be assisting with following our work, with learning about it. We have our website, oceanvoyagesinstitute.org, and you can see film clips of some of our work. But everything you do in your everyday life of picking up plastics and avoiding them is a, such a help in teaching others around you. Thank you. Thank you. Ari, was, hey, that good? was that good for Ari? We have Great. Delaney. I know we have we one have more student. Go ahead, Charlene. Go ahead. We have Delaney. Um, this is Delaney. Um, Darlene, I think she has the next question. But we have so many students on here excited to ask questions. Um, Delaney, Delaney is new to the program. She will be entering sixth grade at New River Middle School, but she found out about our summer program and was excited to participate. Um, so she's very active and she's very excited about the community. And so, um, Delaney, can you just tell us? about your experience with online school and how it's so far? Okay, Delaney, you're live, go ahead. Hi. Can you just tell us? I don't hear anything. Okay, I'm going to We can hear you, Delaney. Yes, I could hear you, Delaney. Do you okay, have? Um, are you on a laptop, Delaney? Yes, I'm on a laptop. Okay, did you go to it through Google? I Oh, it's okay, Katie, while we work on her audio, because your perspective, I know that a lot of these people watching, especially the parents with this new normal, can you explain to everybody from your perspective as a teacher what this is really looking like for the future of education in our community, especially in Broward? And thank you again for all the amazing work you do so that Barry and Mary can understand where this is all going in, the, in terms of technology and education. Yes. So, well, um, so as the magnet coordinator at New River Middle School, I oversee our marine science program. And Charlene, uh, Miss Ambrose, is one of our, our literacy coach, and she does an amazing job with our summer program. But our kids now, you know, having access online is giving them a, pers a perspective of different parts of the world that they may never get to visit um, or definitely can't visit right now for sure. And giving them the chance to talk to Dr. Rock, who's up in New Hampshire. And right now I'm in Minnesota. So I still get to, you know, connect and be a little bit a part of what's going on, even though I'm on, um, away for a few weeks now. And being able to talk to Mary in Hawaii and see what she's doing and see the impact that they're making around the world is connecting them. And the idea is, is that we also want our students to connect with other students around the world so that they can see that what they're doing in Fort Lauderdale, Florida is exactly what a student is doing in Hawaii and exactly what a student is doing over in Europe and a student who's in Africa and a student who's in Indonesia. They are all taking care and doing their part in their, their backyard so that the goal is, is that if we each do our part in the different parts of the world, we will eliminate the marine plastics that are in the ocean. And like Mary said, starting to refuse and try to eliminate our use of single use plastic is something everybody can do. And if our students can see what other students are doing around the world and scientists are doing around the world, it's gonna just open their horizon, broaden them to see that we're not 
it's not just our backyard, it's the entire world and we're all connected to it. Um, and this new normal of online learning is definitely opening our eyes to everything that's happening around the world, especially you know when it comes to marine plastics. What, what, do you, what does it look like for the fall for you, Katie, in terms of, so we have these great programs going on in the summer. And so this technology is going to be instrumental for you and Charlene and, and Principal Westinger to, to help New River Middle School kind of bridge that gap between normal school days and where we're going as a society. Can you talk about that quickly? Um, well, since I've been on vacation and a little bit off the grid lately, I am not as first um, at our school for next year. I know we have a we're at a hybrid model for next year. So we're still going to be um, doing stuff combined and online is still going to be a huge part of what we're going to be doing. And I think just having this opportunity to learn the online network, it's not, you know, we still want our kids, but they learn by doing a lot. And we have the marine environment in our backyard in South Florida, which is a great opportunity. We want to get our students out into the marine environment. Um, and get them that exposure and see that that what's in their backyard. But at the same time, the online allows us them to connect with other people throughout the world and see that the problems that we're dealing with are the same problems and issues that they're dealing with. And we can learn from each other. This is working here, what is working here, and we can bounce ideas off of each other. So as we move forward into next year with school being online and live, it's going to give us more of that opportunity for our students to really connect with other students and other scientists and other people who are making big changes and little changes um, in the terms of marine plastics. So that's one of the benefits of this um, this online that we've been forced into. It's giving our kids um, and they're learning a ton of technology, tons of technology, <laughs> and they're learning how to troubleshoot and work through problem solving on the fly. So um, there's so many skills that besides um, just marine plastics, they're learning a lot. And Dr. Rock can um, tell Delaney a little bit, about, so maybe now we're getting her back on, is about, you know, the technology has come a long way for us to do satellites so that Mary doesn't waste her time going out into areas where there's not as much plastic anymore. Dr. Rock and with us working on the satellites, we can say, here's where we need to go, here's a good concentration, and then move on. So I think that's great. Oh, Delaney's back on, so let's see if she's got sound again. Delaney, Delaney. Yeah, can you hear us again? Yes, yeah. I can hear you guys. Okay. So I know you have some questions for Dr. Rock and Mary. Do you want to ask me questions? It's kind of glitchy. It's kind of laggy. It's kind of laggy. I think Delaney, you may have to turn off your feedback from Teams and go out of Teams and just stay in here, okay? Yeah. Try that. All right, now unmute you and let's see if it works. See, our students are learning problem solving techniques and everything all at once. So, and it looks like Mary's getting some sunlight over there now. The sun's coming out in Hawaii. It is. Delaney, I think we can hear you. The feedback. Um, right, Andy, done. I really need to stop chatting over there. Oh, yeah. Andy, do you want to ask me your question? Hello. You know, you've been saying about how, um, you know, being a new person to New River, how this is such a different experience for you. And I know you were very excited about participating in this. Today. So can you tell them a little bit about your um, today's experience? Um, your, um, yeah, I think we have the, the, the same problem with the feedback. 
But Mary, I think, um, so So Katie, do you want to ask, because I know that Delaney's audio is still an issue, do you want to ask Mary and Barry directly a question and we can wrap it up while we got you? Yes, Delaney, if you want to type your question into the slide, then we can do it that way, okay? Type your question on the, the chat box and then we can, that way you're asking it and I'll just repeat it if necessary. Um, but I know um, she's gonna type. So um, Dr. Rock, can you tell um, tell just a little bit about um, what it is like to become a, what like to get into your positions, you know, both Dr. Rock and Mary, how did your pathway get to where you're at now? Just a short uh, synopsis. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll do that. Um, okay, I've been trained as a botanist. I study plants. And plants grow everywhere, in the oceans, on the land, uh, that sort of thing. So even though I'm here in New Hampshire and not in Florida, I can still study plants. And um, it turns out that I needed to learn how to use satellites to study plants from orbit so I could look at the planet and see different kinds of plants, uh, healthy plants, stress plants, that sort of thing. And one of the really interesting parts of satellites is that they are able to see in different parts of the spectrum. You and I see in the blue, the green, and the red. The satellites can see out in the infrared, out beyond the red. And uh, we can't see that with our eyes, but the satellites can. And the plastics in the ocean show up beautifully in the infrared, whereas they don't show up very well in the visible, in the blue, the green, and the red. And so taking my knowledge of plants and how satellites work, it's going to be great working with students who are learning this new technology and uh, learning to see from 500 miles up pieces of plastic that are fairly small, but you can detect them because of that extended capability satellites have of seeing in the infrared. And so that, that's going to be really exciting. The students find this amazing. Fantastic. So Katie, I think you have one more great student. Uh, we're, we're going to bring in, I think, Cameron. Is she available? That I know wants to ask Mary and Dr. Rock a couple questions. So I think she's popping on. There we go. All right. Katie, do you want to make a question? Hello, Principal Wessinger. How are you? Do you want to make uh -huh. an you want to make an introduction, Principal Westinger, to this great student? We have the audio. You're, you're muted. You have to unmute yourself, Miss Westinger. You're muted. Sorry, I'm Thank sorry. You. Technology. Perfect. So, <laughs> uh, Miss Ambrose is over there interviewing with Ariadza right now with one of the students. I'm so enthralled by what you guys have been saying so far. Um, do we have another student that wants to ask a question? Yeah, thank you yeah. so much, Principal Wessinger. Go ahead. Do uh, you want to introduce the student, uh, Principal Wessinger? I'm not sure who's on today. Cameron is there. Cameron. Cameron, I'm here with up, baby. We got at the bottom. There you go. Cameron, do you have a question? Cameron, can you hear us okay? You can ask Mary and Dr. Rock a question. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear us? Yes. Cameron, what did you learn today? What's the most impactful thing you've learned today? And what do you think? What do you want to ask um, Dr. Rock and Mary? What do they think you can do to help? Have you enjoyed we this? Can, we, can get, we can get, we can buy um, gloves and a bag from the store and and go to the beach and pick up trash to help the environment. Absolutely. That's great that you do that. That's, that's exactly what we're talking about. You can be an example for your friends 
and show them how uh, we can help take much better care of our environment by just picking up the trash that we see, the trash that other people discard without care. And it's a picking up trash is a good way to teach us and those around us how important that is because our trash can cause a lot of harm for creatures in the ocean and birds and so that's wonderful that you do that do you have any questions for us that's such a good action no no you okay we're gonna have, to have another student off of the team's meeting um okay. they're just interviewing with uh ari right now Okay, right. Mindy, while we have you, and again, you know, our hats off to the amazing work you do at New River Middle School. You and Katie are like the dream team over there, super principal, super teacher. You guys are always inspiring us. I really have to come up. And, of course, our, our, our wonderful superintendent, Mr. Runcie, you guys are always on the front lines doing great stuff. What does this mean to you as we're waiting for the next, uh, next student to be able to have your kids talk to Mary after her record pull of 103 tons of marine plastic? And Dr. Rock, what is it like for you and the kids? We can, uh, Miss Ambrose, you can reconnect them. So she's going to reconnect you guys. But um, it has been amazing for me to watch the students be able to connect with such great scientists and activists out there. Um, when I found out on Friday that my kids were going to have this opportunity, I was so excited. Although it takes Katie and Miss Ambrose to pull all the kids together and make the magic happen. But the students here, I know that they they feel as though this is a great thing that they've done, but I don't think they realize um, how much is out there. When we were talking about how much trash was picked up, I don't think they understood the, the gravity of that until we broke it down into numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, thank you again. You, know, that, you, want, you, you want to introduce the other two? All right, put another kid on Miss Ambrose. Right. So, Mary, when we this morning when we were talking oh, to the wow. kids, we had to we had to really put it in our own perspective of what a what, what ton is like for them because they don't understand tons as much. So we had to break it down into pounds and talk about the number of elephants. And, and once they saw that, they were just like, you know, kind of, it gives them a little bit more of a visual and connection. And um, I think this opportunity, you know, our kids are excited um, about learning. And I, Miss Ambrose, you know, and her team at, with the Sea Stars, Miss Austin, Miss Youngblood, Mr. Torres, I don't even know. I can't even list all the teachers who have been on this summer with the kids, um, but they've been really working hard to make these connections. And so we are so thankful that you guys took the time to um, chat with them because there's 30 other kids who are sitting on on the team's meeting um, watching this and they um, are very excited to just kind of have this opportunity. And I know they all want to get on with their questions at some time. So we may have send you guys some questions that they come up with during our um, debriefing uh, to send you back. Cause I know some of them ask the questions of, you know, what's it like living on a boat and things like that, but they may want to chat with you about later. Um, but Ms. absolutely. Ever, we have just been, um, you know, having these opportunities, you know, we never thought, you know, to kind of go this far until you're in the position where you have to think outside the box. Um, and this the um, this time for us has definitely given us the opportunity to kind of think outside the box and also to show our kids the career path are very different for um, different people. And there you can go one way or you can go another way, and but you can still always, no matter what career path you take, um, if it's education, if it's working, if it's sailing, if it's yachting, if it's the marine industry, whatever it may be, you can still make a difference in terms of marine plastics and our ocean and our environment, no matter what path you take in your future. Um, so we, we appreciate, you know, You've taken the time to wake up early for us today. Oh, no problem. I was just going to say something that I would be fascinated with that would be a way the school could really help us 
is coming up. I, I know that 103 tons, I, you know, I don't even know what that really looks like, except for the fact that I've seen it. I've seen it. But it would be great to figure out how to relay that, whether it's, you know, sports fields or elephants or so different ways that the students might come up with that they think are good at describing how much 103 tons equates to so that people understand it better. Um, you know, that would be a great school project and I would love to have the answers and use them educating other people because that's a very important process is how to relate that so people understand the enormity of what's there and what we are bringing out. So I'd, I'd love to hear more results from good ways to describe it because I bet your students could come up with some very creative positive things and we could even say where they came from when we're talking about uh, them to other students. So I, I'd love that if we could get more information from the ideas. Yeah, so as, as we come around an hour, this has been a fantastic. Thank you so much, Mary, for getting up at five yeah. in the morning in Hawaii to speak to these great kids. Uh, so hello mm -hmm. to Hawaii and then uh, Dr. Rock for you up in New Hampshire. And then Katie, again, it's always such a thrill to be able to work with you and your amazing teachers and Charlene with your incredible program, the virtual program. And of course, the super principal, uh, Principal Wessinger. So thank you all <laughs> for, for watching today. And we, we've been live on YouTube and on Facebook and on Instagram, uh, we're actually on uh, LinkedIn. And so please give us a like, please support Broward Schools and the great work that's going on with Mary and her team at Ocean Voyages. Uh, Mary, what is your website, oceanvoyagesinstitute.org? Yes. Yes, so please, uh, if you wanna follow Mary and her great work and support what she's doing for her next mission, please visit her website. And again, thank you all for supporting uh, teachers and educators like Katie and her amazing team. We will see you next time. and. Keep up the great work, Katie, Mary, Barry, and Charlene. We'll see you all soon. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.